You are watching ABC 7 News at 5.30. Welcome back now to our continuing coverage of that deadly mass shooting overnight in Southern California. 13 people, including the gunmen, were killed and at least 20 more injured. The horror began around 11.20 p.m. in Thousand Oaks, California. That's when investigators say Ian David Long opened fire on people inside a country bar. At the time, the bar was hosting a college night and it was packed with students. Included in those killed in the attack, Sheriff's Deputy Ron Helis, who was one of the first to respond. Active shooter incidents are on the rise. That's according to a new report released by the FBI. The report looks at shootings in 2016 and 2017. 21 states around the country from California to Maryland saw active shooter incidents in that 22 year period. Texas had the most with five, followed by four each in California and Florida. In 2016, there were 20 active shooter incidents and then last year another 30. That's an increase from the 2014 to 15 period during which there were 40 active shooter incidents. The captain of a duck boat that capsized in Missouri during a summer storm is facing federal charges in the deadly accident. Kenneth McKee was at the helm when the boat went down in July on a Branson Lake. 17 people died after the boat tipped over. McKee is facing 17 counts, including misconduct and negligence or inattention causing death. Prosecutors say there was lightning in the area when McKee drove the duck boat into the water. They say he also failed to tell passengers to put on their life vests. If convicted, McKee could face up to 10 years in prison for each of the 17 counts. While some of us may be experiencing voter fatigue after the election earlier this week, one group of people cannot wait for their next chance to go to the polls. We're talking about Floridians with felony convictions who just got back their right to vote. ABC 7's Jackie Kelly shows us how the passing of Amendment 4 is affecting people. Jackie. Scott, when some people get convicted of a crime and end up in places like the jail behind me, it's easy to feel like they'll never be able to fit back into normal society. But now, after felons complete their sentence, they get back the right to vote, which one man tells me is the best gift that he could ask for. I've been on cloud nine for the past 48 hours now. Steve Phelan says he was convicted of first degree arson and second degree reckless public endangerment back in 2005. Since then, he has completed his sentence of house arrest and probation, but until the passing of Amendment 4, he hasn't been allowed to vote. Florida was just one of four states that didn't automatically restore voting rights after felons completed their sentence. But 64% of people who showed up to the polls thought that needed to change. A solid gesture from the citizens of the state of Florida who found it in their hearts to say, loudly that we do deserve this second chance. And Phelan says this idea of a second chance is hard to come by for people with convictions. Living with a felon, a felony conviction, that's a stigmatizing identity. And it is one that bars access to certain jobs. It is one that carries a sense of distrust whenever this identity comes to light. But knowing that people are willing to grant the second chance, it makes having this identity a little less scary when it comes down to my future growth. Phelan says with this victory, he will now be sure that his voice is heard. You better believe I will be participating in every election. I mean, as a right that has been taken away, it's one of those things where you don't realize what you've got until it's gone. Now this amendment, which was supported by people on both sides of the aisle, goes into effect immediately, but it does not apply to people who are convicted of murder or sexual offenses. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jackie Kelly, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Jackie. This past Tuesday night, a majority of voters in Sarasota chose to change the date for city elections. Elections in Sarasota will be moved from the spring to the fall to increase voter turnout. And that means for one time only, current commissioners will have their terms automatically lengthened by a year and a half. Elections that would normally be held in March of next year will now happen in November of 2020. That will give bonus time to Mayor Liz Alpert, Commissioner Shelley Freeland Eddy and Willie Shaw. It would also extend the time for Commissioners Hagen Brody and Jen Ahern Koch until 2022. One political author we talked to says he thought that was presumptuous of commissioners to think citizens would want an extra year and a half of them. 
My feeling is that kind of thinking is penny wise and pound foolish. I would rather spend more money on elections and get it done right because the amount of money that these people budget is so much greater than the amount that we spend on elections. I don't think that should be a consideration. ABC 7 talked to City Hall taxpayer watchdog Martin Hyde about the extended term of the current commission. He had strong words for this decision, decision saying, quote, keep in mind, this is the same commission that just raised the tax rate. In the next two years, they could bankrupt the city. A Northport Park will be closing temporarily for a couple of days as the city continues to work on a new playground. The Garden of the Five Senses Park on Pan American Boulevard will close at 3 p.m. on Friday. The park will reopen for normal hours starting Saturday, November 16th. Now, while closed, crews will be surfacing the new Boundless Adventures Playground. The park is being designed for all children, including those that have physical, developmental, cognitive, or sensory issues. Heading over now to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Hi, Bob. Hi, how are you doing, Taylor and Scott? We're looking at pretty decent uh, weather, uh, warm weather for Friday. It's going to stay warm. Temperatures well above average, uh, but get, get ready for a little cooler weather on Saturday. Not much, but you'll notice a little drier air, too. A weak front's going to move down on Saturday morning. It'll bring a slight chance for a shower or two. And then the next headline, cooler next week. A stronger front will move in. Uh, it was advertised a few days ago. It was a little bit colder, but uh, it's still going to be cool, and you'll notice it on Thursday and Friday of next week. And even, uh, I should say Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, even into Friday. 82 degrees right now. We have sunshine out there. And the humidity is still pretty high as the dew point temperature is summer-like in the low 70s. That kind of dew point, you can expect a little bit of patchy fog forming overnight. Temperatures currently into the low 80s right near the water, still in the mid-80s inland. Uh, we're looking at 79 in Venice, 78 in Inglewood. Some rain near Northport and the water temperature at 80 degrees. You can see some heavier storms to the north of us now. But on that uh, southeast wind flow, and the temperatures warming into the mid to upper 80s inland, Few showers have popped up due to that heat, and we have a sea breeze that's moved into Northport, causing the showers to be a little bit more intense there. And notice they're not moving now, so it's just hanging right over Northport. You can see some pretty impressive rainfall totals here, as that sea breeze will just kind of hold it off, and that will continue to uh, just dump some heavy rainfall there. Right now, not a lot of lightning, but I wouldn't be surprised to see one or two lightning strikes emerge from that cell. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. After winning a special election in February, State Representative Margaret Good is now two for two. On Tuesday, the District 72 House Representative was re-elected. After spending months campaigning, Good, the only Democrat elected in this area, says she's looking forward to getting to work. One of the reasons that I initially decided to run for office was because I am concerned about our environment. Uh, back in 2014, Florida passed a constitutional amendment requiring that a third of our document stamp revenue be used for land preservation, and that has never happened. Um, that is always one of my priorities. Um, and now with the exacerbated red tide, with blue-green algae, I'm going to work in the legislature to um, work on environmental regulations. Good says she's very happy with the voter turnout for the midterm elections, and she hopes that momentum will continue for the elections ahead. Well, less than 24 hours after the midterm elections, Attorney General Jeff Sessions is out of a job. He was one of the President Trump. He was one of President Trump's earliest supporters, but Attorney General Jeff Sessions also became one of the president's favorite targets. President Trump was infuriated by Sessions recusing himself from the Russia probe, never forgiving him. Sessions, now former chief of staff Matt Whitaker, has been named by the president to replace him. But Whitaker has publicly criticized the special counsel's investigation. Some Democrats say he should recuse himself as well. The White House disagrees. Why would he be recused? Because CNN keeps playing a clip of what he said as a private citizen. The White House says Sessions resigned and was not fired, but the former attorney general made clear in his resignation letter it was not his decision, writing, quote, Dear Mr. President, at your request, I'm submitting my resignation. Today, Kellyanne Conway says the administration has continued to cooperate with the Russia investigation, adding, quote, nobody wants to prolong it. Two decades after voters approved a constitutional amendment that called for a high-quality system of public schools, today the Florida Supreme Court took up a legal battle about whether the state has properly carried out the voters' wishes. That 1998 constitutional amendment requires the state to provide a, quote, uniform, efficient, safe, secure, and high-quality system of public schools. The lower courts have ruled it's difficult to determine exactly what uniform and high-quality mean. 
All children is uh, kids that come from poverty, kids that um, are a racial minority, kids with disabilities. And if you look at the statistics and disaggregate, there are significant populations that have um, just great disparities and they're not achieving. The constitutionality of two popular school voucher programs, which pay for more than 100,000 kids to attend private schools, is also being challenged. The court has not said when it expects to rule on the case. For the first time in about a decade, interest rates have gone up. Even the 0.1 or 0.2% raise can affect us with our everyday spending and saving. Since we've had record low interest rates since the 2008 recession, experts say it was only a matter of time for this to happen. Coming up on ABC 7 at 7, we'll talk about what this means for us. When we increase interest rates, typically the price of borrowing money increases as well. Taking out big loans for buying a car, student loans, and mortgages are where we'll see the impact the most. While this all sounds like spending is going to be limited, financial experts tell us it's not something to be too concerned about. When the Fed decides to move rates, that's a positive. People don't realize that all the time. That's a positive because the Fed says, okay, economies are good, people are making good money, and we can afford to raise the rates and not disrupt too much. They are expecting interest rates to continue increasing, but little by little, until the economy balances out once again. Thousands of Americans living with mice and mold, the landlord largely ignoring some life-threatening deficiencies. If you look up there, oh, yeah. I don't know what I'm growing out What's my ceiling. The only way the toilet fills up is if you turn the sink on. Otherwise, what happens? It don't flush. We just don't invest the way we should as a country. Many of the residents in these properties are elderly or disabled, and it's a problem all over the country, including here in Florida. Join us for Failure to Fix, coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Still to come in your Suncoast News, where are all the butterflies? What may be behind a dramatic decline of butterflies and caterpillars in North Florida? like to pay less. That's why you made Honda Accord the best-selling mid-size car in America. Get the redesigned Accord, the North American Car of the Year, or Civic, a KDP.com Best Buy for less than a competition. Like SUVs and trucks? Get Motor Trend's SUV of the Year, CRV, the eight-passenger pilot, or Ridgeline truck for up to $42.40 less today at your local Honda dealer. Enjoy fine wine and great foods, all while supporting a great cause. It's the 17th annual Suncoast Food and Wine Fest, happening Saturday, November 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample great food from the area's finest restaurants. All proceeds go to local charities and rotary projects. For tickets and information, visit SuncoastFoodAndWineFest.com. Lots of people who are confused about which Medicare plan is right for them. Hey, that's me. I barely know where to start. Well, start here with me, Karen. I'm a licensed Humana sales agent. Well, it's nice to meet you, Karen. I'm John Smith. Hi, John. At Humana, we know you're unique, so you have different needs from other John Smiths. Yeah, I've always thought so. And together, we can find a plan that's right for you. Great. I go to the doctor a couple of times a year and I have some prescriptions, but I'm never fully sure of what's covered and what's not. With Humana's all-in-one Medicare Advantage plans, you get coverage for hospital stays, doctor visits, and Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable and sometimes no monthly plan premium. Do you have any more information? Sure, I'll get a decision guide in the mail to you today. They're free. Finally, someone who understands the real me. Your health and happiness is important to us. Call or go online now to get your free decision guide. Call a licensed Humana sales agent today. Find out first at 4 on the Suncoast with ABC 7 News at 4.
ABC 7 News at 4 starts with a detailed look at your first alert weather forecast to help you plan and prepare. We give you a fresh, fast-paced rundown of the day's top stories and videos, including breaking news, live updates, and traffic hotspots, all at a new, more convenient time. Find out first at 4, weekdays on ABC 7. Childhood obesity has long been a problem in the United States. Now new research from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation reveals new state-by-state -state differences and just how serious the problem has become. Meredith Wood reports. You may already know that being overweight comes with a slew of health issues that can shorten lives. But new research shows that being underweight increases the risk of dying early too. BMI or body mass index is one indicator doctors use to measure a person's health. BMI between 21 and 25 is linked to the lowest level of morbidity. Interestingly, people under the recommended BMI are at an increased risk for dementia, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, and suicide. The study analyzed data from 3.6 million people and over 360,000 deaths. Obesity was shown to reduce lifespan by 4.2 years for men and 3.5 years for women. And what's worse, if this trend continues, obesity will be the most common cause of cancer in women by the year 2043. That's according to Cancer Research UK. To reduce your risk of developing any health condition, it's important to keep your body mass index in the healthy range. You can do that by getting proper nutrition and incorporating exercise into your daily routine. For today's Health Minute, I'm Meredith Wood. ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, you don't see this very often in November. Towering cumulonimbus as a result of uh, the sea breeze. That's right, Andrea getting this one. Looking off toward the east and southeast right there from her vantage point. This one from Sarasota off Clark Road. Looking to the east too, you see those it looks like bear ears. I don't know if anyone has their different uh, ideas what it looked like, but that's what my first choice was right there. Uh, we have a few showers around, and you can see uh, some snow falling as far south as Wichita and the Kansas City. Some snow there that's all heading to the south and east. Not the snow so much, but that colder air associated with it will. Uh, we'll get a little taste of that on Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures will get back down to close to average, maybe a degree or two above average on Saturday and Sunday. but. Uh, not a real cold snap until uh, midweek next week when a stronger front is expected to move through. Right now there is a stationary front located uh, just to the north of us. We're staying in this warm sector here and this warm air will stick around through Friday and we'll see uh, generally isolated showers developing in the afternoon with that southeasterly wind flow, a little west coast sea breeze developing. And sure enough, we have the right ingredients for those afternoon showers and storms. Now typically during the summer, it's a little bit more lit up here and a little bit more intense. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a possibility of some lightning strikes with that cell near Northport. And certainly we've had a few already just in the last 10 minutes. And you can see that uh, not a lot, but still that indicates that the storm is actually gaining in some uh, strength in terms of vertical height there. And uh, we are looking at uh, some pretty heavy rainfall now near Toledo Blade Boulevard, stretching out to I-75. And it's not moving much because the sea breeze pushed in and hung right there. And so that southeast wind kind of meeting there. And uh, that's where the storm is uh, going to really uh, produce some moderate to heavy rainfall for the next half hour at least before it rains itself out. Uh, you can see uh, near Sumter Boulevard, just a little bit to the east thereof, but it is raining there uh, in Northport near Hillsborough Bo uh, Boulevard as well. Well, elsewhere across our region, we still have some scattered showers over into uh, Polk County, but not a lot. And as far as lows go tonight, we'll start off tomorrow morning in the low 70s, which is fairly typical for more August or September weather and 71 in Bradenton, 68 in Parrish, a little bit cooler, but not much and some fog forming in some inland areas, especially where the rain has fallen uh, earlier tonight. Well, temperatures uh, currently in the upper 70s. The water temperature actually has warmed up a couple of degrees and it still feels like 88 degrees in Mayaca City, 87 in Arcadia, not too bad near the coast. As far as uh, the forecast goes tomorrow, looks like this. We'll see high temperatures into the mid 80s, even some upper 80s east of I-75. Uh, just a 20% chance or less of a shower or two popping up uh, in the afternoon and evening. You can see that with the future cast showing sunshine tomorrow to start the day. And then we'll see that southeasterly wind flow, a little west coast breeze. And most of the activity will be inland. And here comes the front on Friday. It'll be over the panhandle. Very thin line of showers are associated with it. 
And as it pushes through our area, sometime Saturday morning, it looks like it will bring a little increase in clouds and a slight chance for showers and some slightly drier and slightly cooler air as we move into uh, looks like Saturday afternoon and into Sunday for boaters tomorrow. Light chop out there. Seas will be running two feet or less, and we will see that west wind develop in the afternoon. The extended forecast then does call for a slightly cooler temperatures, but not until we get to Wednesday of next week when highs will be in the low 70s there. Thursday as well and low temperatures into the 50s. So below average, we've got to wait about a week before we get there. Back to you. Thank you, Bob. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home. An accident we told you about earlier on US 41 northbound just before Talavas Road is still causing delays for drivers. We are also seeing slowdowns for drivers on I-75 northbound around the University Parkway exit. New research shows the number of butterflies and caterpillars in North Florida has been declining over the last decade or so. The University of Florida study released this week shows the number has declined by 80 percent since 2005. Researchers believe two major factors could be responsible here. Milkweed is a favorite food of young monarch butterflies and its availability has been sharply reduced by development and by glyphosate, an herbicide widely used in agriculture to kill weeds. Stay with us. Entertainment news is coming up next. Come into a California Closet showroom to experience our quality materials and construction and collaborate with our designers to create the perfect custom solution for any room. Go to CaliforniaClosets.com to request a free design consultation and locate the showroom nearest to you. Blue 32! Blue 32! Ha <laughs> ha! It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge. The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Ghetto location near you or visit Ghetto.com. Ghetto's got it. Sarasota's only area rug superstore. Christmas traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. Tomorrow at 9 on Suncoast View. All it takes is sand, a shovel, and a bucket for these artists to impress us. I'm Linda Carson. On Suncoast View, we try making a sculpture for the Crystal Classic Sculpting Competition. The Sarasota Pops Orchestra previews their tribute to veterans. We'll get a sample of their John Denver coming home. We'll learn about local Veterans Day events. And Kate's Cookie Lab is in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 9 on Suncoast View. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Come into a California Closet showroom to experience our quality materials and construction and collaborate with our designers to create the perfect custom solution for any room. Go to CaliforniaClosets.com to request a free design consultation and locate the showroom nearest to you. In entertainment news, get your tissues ready because Sleepless in Seattle is returning to theaters. Yeah, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan will be back on the big screen in honor of the classic romantic comedy's 25th anniversary. Fathom Events and Sony Pictures Entertainment are going to host screenings of the film in more than 400 theaters across the country. Hanks plays a recently widowed father who shares his grief with a radio show host played by Meg Ryan. 
who was overcome with emotion after hearing his story. The film will hit theaters again December 2nd and 5th. Plus, some eager Justin Timberlake fans might just cry me a river over this news. The singer has postponed two more shows in Tacoma, Washington over bruised vocal cords. The postponements started last Wednesday with a show at New York City's Madison Square Garden. He announced it was on doctor's orders, saying his vocal cords are, quote, severely bruised. A show in Buffalo, New York was also moved. His next concert on the schedule is in Portland, Oregon next week. We'll have to wait and see if he has to po postpone that one as well or if the show will go on. The Super American Circus is coming to Tampa on November 18th and 19th. You can catch daredevil clown Bello Knock and his amazing stunts at the Tampa Fairgrounds. The Suncoast resident will be joined by other amazing acts such as motorcycle daredevils and gravity-defying trapeze artists. Proceeds from the show will go to benefit Flight to the North Pole, which helps terminally ill children and their families in their time of need. Singer Michael Bublé is coming to Tampa's Emily Arena. That's where he will be kicking off his U.S. tour. The opening show will be on Wednesday, February 13th. The It's a Beautiful Day singer has already completed five sold-out world tours, won four Grammy Awards, and sold over 60 million records. Tickets go on sale Monday, November 19th, just in time for the holidays. For the romantics out there, that's the day before Valentine's Day. That could be a Guys, nice evening. Yeah. Husbands, boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Come into a California Closet showroom to experience our quality materials and construction and collaborate with our designers to create the perfect custom solution for any room. Go to CaliforniaClosets.com to request a free design consultation and locate the showroom nearest to you. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. Teachers inspire our children and promote a lifetime of learning. So ABC7 and Get A Lot Automotive want to honor these chalkboard champions by giving them the chance to win $500. But we need your help. Go to mysuncoast.com slash chalkboard champions to nominate an outstanding teacher who's really making a difference. And each month we'll deliver $500 to one teacher in Sarasota County and one teacher in Manatee County. Go to mysuncoast.com and nominate your chalkboard champion today. Investigate TV tackles the tough topics. What happened to my life was awful. When your health is compromised, we investigate. They are really drug dealers and in white coats. Corporate greed exposed. How do you trust them to run this program? The powerful held accountable with in-depth journalism led by award-winning journalist Lee Zurich. We're your watchdog. Search Investigate TV on your Roku device. Download it now. Come into a California Closet showroom to experience our quality materials and construction and collaborate with our designers to create the perfect custom solution for any room. Go to CaliforniaClosets.com to request a free design consultation and locate the showroom nearest to you. Shop online anytime at VeniceToyota.com on US 41 South. 